Hello class, this is Mr. Hart, and in this podcast we want to continue our discussion of geometric proofs, and today we want to look at how we can use lines and angles to figure out some cool things about geometry and some geometric proofs. Okay, But before we look at any types of proofs, we want to look at our toolbox, or things we can use to do these types of proofs. Okay, And so there are some things we want to know, some terms we should know from previous geometry classes that we can use when we're doing these types of proofs. Okay? And the first one of these is what we call complementary angles. Okay? And the idea is if we have two angles that share this right angle or this perpendicular line, you could say, then the two angles are complementary and add up to 90 degrees. Okay? And so if you ever, ever see these two guys share a right angle, you know that the angles must add up to 90. Okay? We also have supplementary angles, or what we sometimes call a linear pair, because they share a line. Okay, And so a linear pair is two angles that are side by side, and they're supplementary, meaning they are equal to 180, okay, 180 degrees when you add them together, okay, because a straight line is basically 180 degrees. Okay, So this is our first two terms. Okay. We know that two angles together equal 90 degrees if they share a right angle, and we know they are 180 degrees okay, if they share a line or if they're a linear pair. Okay, So hopefully that's a review from a previous math class. Let's look at some other things we want to know when we're trying to do these types of proofs. Okay, So we're looking specifically at how lines and angles interact okay, and how two lines can intersect. Okay or multiple lines can intersect. And so if we have two lines crossing at any point, okay, no matter which lines they are, if they're intersecting, we have what are called vertical angles. Okay? And basically what it means is that this angle right here is equal to that angle right there. Okay? So vertical angles are equal to each other. Okay? Also, by the same point, these two angles opposite each other are also congruent or equal okay, in measure. And so any set of vertical angles, things that share this intersection of lines, are congruent. Okay? They're equal to each other. Okay? And so these two are equal to each other. These two are equal to each other. But just keep in mind that all four aren't necessarily equal to each other. Okay? Just the ones that are opposite are vertical. Okay? All right. So some more terms we want to know. Okay? A transversal is when we have two parallel lines. Okay, Q and R in this case are parallel. They're never going to intersect. And then we have P, which we call the transversal. So a transversal goes across two parallel lines. Okay, it transverses them. Okay, so we would say that P is the transversal of Q and R. Okay. Now let's look at some properties of transversals that we're going to want to know. Okay. So the first property is what we call corresponding angles. So when we have these transversals, corresponding angles are the angles that are basically the same angle but on the two different parallel lines. So for example, 5 on this transverse or on this parallel line is pretty much the same angle as 1 on this parallel line, okay? And if that's the case, then because they're parallel and because of these properties, the corresponding angles are equal to each other as well. So 1 in this case would be equal to 5. Okay. There are some other corresponding angles on this transversal as well. Okay. We got 2 and 6 would be corresponding. Um, 3 and 7 would be corresponding. And 8 and 4 would be corresponding. Okay. So any of those angles that are corresponding, basically the same part on the parallel line, are going to be equal to each other. Okay, so 2 would be equal to 6, 3 would be equal to 7, and 4 would be equal to 8. Okay? So we can use this fact when we're trying to do proofs with transversals. Okay, it's very nice that we can just kind of, you know, translate this over, say, okay, if 8's equal to 4 by corresponding angles, and then we can show some stuff over here. Okay, so this is going to be a very big tool, is this corresponding angles. Okay. Another tool we can use, okay, which we proved in class, but I'm not going to go through right now, 
was the alter alternate interior angles, okay? And this comes from corresponding angles and vertical angles. But the idea of an alternate interior angle is angles like four and six would be considered alternate interior angles, okay? Alternate meaning they're on opposite sides of the transversal and interior because they're inside the two parallel lines, okay? So four and six in this case are alternate interior and we proved in class that four and six are equal to each other. So alternate interior angles are equal, okay? Likewise, three and five, they're on alternate sides of the transversal and they're on the interior. So three and five would also be equal, okay, alternate interior angles, okay? So alternate interior angles are always equal to each other, okay? And for my class, you can use this fact when you're doing the proofs if you want, and you can just label it as AIA, okay, alternate interior angles, okay, alternate interior angle theorem, okay? All right, there's a couple more that we want to look at, a couple more ideas. Another theorem that we proved in class was the alternate exterior angle theorem. That comes from the alternate interior angle theorem, okay? And so alternate exterior, alternate meaning opposite sides of the transversal, and exterior meaning outside of the two parallel lines. So this angle and this angle here, two and eight, for example, are alternate exterior angles. They're on alternate sides of the transversal, and they're exterior or outside of the parallel lines, okay? And again, we showed in class that these are equal to each other, so alternate exterior angles are equal to each other, okay? And likewise, these are alternate exterior angles one and seven, and they are equal to each other as well, okay? And so again, for my class, you can use this in your proofs if you want, and label it as the alternate exterior angle theorem, or AEA. Okay. All right, and the last one, the same side interior angle theorem is another one we showed in class. And so same side means they're not on opposite sides of the transversal, they're on the same side, and they're interior, so they're inside the parallel lines. So four and five, for example, would be same side interior. Okay, in this case, they are not equal to each other. It's pretty clear to see this is an obtuse angle and this is an acute angle they actually add up to 180. Okay, and again, in class we showed why that is by using supplementary angles, but they're gonna add up to 180 degrees, okay? So same side interior angles always add up to 180, okay? Likewise, three and six are same side interior, and they would also add up to 180, okay? So there we go, so same side interior angles always add up to 180, and you can use this as well in your proofs if you want and call it same side interior, okay? SSI. All right, so we went through a lot of ideas. Let's just quickly review what our toolbox is for these problems, okay? So our proof toolbox, you could say, things we can use when we're doing these proofs. Um, first one is complementary angles always add up to 90. The second tool is supplementary angles add up to 180. Vertical angles are congruent or equal to each other. Corresponding angles are congruent or equal to each other. Um, we can use AIA, the alternate interior angle theorem, which says they are congruent or equal in measure. Alternate exterior angle theorem, alternate exterior angles are equal in measure or congruent. And then the same side interior angle theorem says that they add up to 180, okay? So for my class, I'm okay if you use any of these tools when you're doing your homework, okay? So let me go ahead and show you what you'll be doing for your homework really quick so you can get an idea of how we're going to use these. So this is what your homework looks like. Let's just go through what you'll be doing. The first set of problems, you'll just be identifying these angle relations that we've been talking about. Um, so for example, it says to identify linear pairs, vertical angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, okay? You're just going to be going through, and on the diagram above, you're going to list all of these that you can find, okay? So for example, with linear pairs, okay? We know a linear pair is basically anything that's supplementary. So we could say that one and three are a linear pair, okay? So one and three are a linear pair. We know that two and four are a linear pair, okay? Five and seven, six and eight, 
one and two, three and four, so on and so forth. So you're going to fill this box with all the linear pairs that you can find. Okay. Then you'll do the same thing with vertical angles. Well, I know that one and four are vertical angles, so I could list them. Five and eight are vertical angles, so I could list them. Um, two and three, six and seven, you know, so on and so forth. List all the vertical angles. And you'll just keep doing this. Corresponding angles, okay? One and five can, can be considered corresponding. Three and seven, okay? And list every single set that you can find of corresponding, okay? And so on with alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, okay? So you're just identifying what angle relations what the angle, angle relations are that you can see in these diagrams. Okay? And make sure you fill in every single pair that you see. Okay? For the second set of problems, you're going to be actually doing some small proofs based on that proof toolbox that we were looking at before. Okay? But some of these will be very simple. So for example, given that L and M are parallel, prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 7 or equal to angle 7 basically. Okay? So we're looking at this angle here and this angle here. So for my class, that's pretty easy. All you're going to be doing is saying, well, 2 is congruent to 7 by the ex uh, alternate exterior angle theorem. There we go. Sorry. So you're just going to say 2 is congruent to 7 by the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay? Simple enough. Okay? Um, for some of these other ones, you may need a couple steps, like 1 and 6 is equal to 180 for this one, right? Um, we don't have something directly from 1 to 6, but we might be able to say, well, 1 we know is congruent to 5 by the corresponding angles. Okay. And then we could show that 1 and or 5 and 6 are supplementary. Okay. And that would mean they're equal to 180. So you ha we may need a couple of steps, but it shouldn't be too bad. Just write down why you know something is true, or oops, I wrote that down wrong. That should be that 5 and 6 add up to 180. 5 plus 6 equals 180. Okay, and there you go. That, that would be enough information for me, for my class, for this proof. Okay, just show me what you know and why you know it, basically. Okay, I know 1's equal to 5 because it's a corresponding angle. I know that 5 and 6 add up to 180 because they're supplementary. Okay. And so for the second set of problems, that's what you're doing, just listing some facts and how you know that, okay, based on that proof toolbox we were looking at. Okay? But there you go. That's your homework. Um, hopefully this all makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.